Randy and Patricia join a militia by Randy Gillis. Considering that there are more penises in cyberspace than carbon dioxide at a Trump rally, thanks to adolescent boys of all ages, alcohol, and poor judgment, and considering when college students are asked who won the Civil War, their answers range from we did to which Civil War, and considering that there are no less than two end time dates fast approaching, and because I've been hearing more random gunfire around my house and fireworks on the 4th of July, I've decided that I should find a militia to hook up with. These are dark days and getting darker by the minute. I called my lesbian friend, Patricia, and she harbors a deep-seated penchant for firearms and violence. I knew she would be the best guide in this strange new world, because let's face it, the survivalists will soon be at the top of the food chain, so I need to get in good with them now. I showed up at Patricia's house with my beanie weenie casserole and a bottle of white wine. Because weenies are an amalgamation of several perfectly legitimate meat products, I went with the white because it's all I had. Patricia greeted me with a smile, practically bursting with anticipatory excitement because I reached out to her with weaponary questions. She's been fantasizing about arming me up for years. Up to this point, we've always respected each other's boundaries. She knew that no firearm of any kind could enter my house, and I knew that no pinko, hippie, tree-hugging, commie, new-age bullshit propaganda, her words, not mine, could enter hers. After I forced her to remove her fatigue pants so I could properly press them, we were on our way. She was able to score me a guest ticket for the semi-annual Greater Randolph County Sons of the Revolutionary Brotherhood of White, Whiter, Whitest, Blah, 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 or something like that. Patricia pulled her impressively loud, late model, okay, she calls it a pickup truck, I refer to it as a post-apocalyptic all-terrain lesbomobile, into the nearly full parking lot of the VFW. At least our truck will be easy to spot, as it is the only one without a Confederate flag decal in the rear window, which also makes it a target. That and the pussy power flag waving in the southern breeze from the antenna, which is better than a bulletproof shield. I begin to rethink the rainbow flag t-shirt I was wearing. As we approached the doorway, Patricia stopped and turned to me. She informed me that she would be willing to deliver an ass-kicking for a good reason. I politely pointed out that I am alert and oriented to both time and environment, and I would be on my best behavior. We marched on. We stood in the doorway and watched as a wave of silence slowly engulfed the room, as more and more folks became aware of our presence. As I surveyed the crowd, several conclusions leapt at me. First, the American flag is as versatile a fashion accessory as black pumps. Second, southern gentlemen really need to conquer their vanity and to go up a size or two on their shirts. And lastly, Jesus Christ has a surprising number of personal acquaintances who believe passionately to be the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the sanctity of high-caliber assault rifles, as evidenced by the tables full of AK Heinz 57 Magnum pump action, semi-automatic, crank start, strap on, cowardness, masked as courage type thingies on display. We were approached by this hysterical bottom, kind of cute in a geriatric, rotund sort of way, who demanded to know if I loved my country. Thinking it was a trick question, I said I was ambivalent. He asked me if that was a Christian denomination. In a panic, I replied, praise Jesus. NASCAR caps filled the air. At that moment, I understood American politics just a little bit better. My new inquisitive friend, let's call him Slim, hooked his arm around mine and led me into the room. Patricia had long since abandoned me for the ammunition booth run by a young woman with whom I'm convinced she had a great deal in common. I was now on my own. As we strolled deeper into the room, a very charming older lady with a sweet smile and a huge crucifix hanging around her neck walked up to us and offered to take the casserole dish I was holding. I offered the wine as well, but she ever so politely informed me that there was plenty of sweet tea and there was no need for hard liquor. She took the bottle and said I could retrieve it upon departure. Till then, it will be safely locked up and out of harm's way. She complimented me on my t-shirt and I promised to send her one. We continued on and Slim introduced me to a gentleman he referred to only as Junior. Junior was a vision in camouflage. The fact that he was able to successfully contain an extra extra large midsection under an extra large t-shirt didn't escape my attention. I complimented him on the fearlessness of his choices. He spat in a cup, smiled at me, and nodded. Diane Fossey, eat your heart out. 
We strolled up by the next booth where a young man of slight build was proudly displaying what appeared to be a prop from the Alien franchise. My word, that looks heavy, I offered as a salutation. His grin displayed not only surprisingly good oral hygiene, but a sense of pride that I found somewhat disturbing, but kind of sweet. She does have some heft to her, he boasted. I wanted to ask why the feminine pronoun for a phallic-inspired, thinly-veiled ejaculation metaphor. Seriously, the facial expressions of men firing weapons are nearly identical to the facial expressions of male porn performers during the part everyone winds up fast-forwarding to. And I've done extensive research on this. And Patricia assures me that the same can be said for the ladies, which begs the question, is sex becoming more violent, or is violence just sexy? But he thrust the clunky metal male enhancer into my hands. I nearly dropped it. Slim and the young man moved to catch me, but I regained my footing just in time to see Patricia grinning from ear to ear at the sight of me double-clutching another man's weapon that didn't end with an exchange of phone numbers. I looked over the hideous contraption like I knew what I was doing and casually remarked that I could certainly kill some shit with this bad boy. I returned the thing to the young man, and Slim guided me toward the back of the room. He asked me the one question I never expected. He asked me what I thought about the current state of affairs regarding teabaggers. Finally, common ground. While I had my suspicions about Slim, I never expected them to be confirmed so boldly and in this venue. I leaned in and coyly whispered that I was a teabagger before teabaggers were cool and that I was appalled that teabaggers were not featured more prominently in the mainstream adult media. Slim's eyes filled with recognition and relief. He lamented the fact that most folks just don't understand the true spirit of teabagging. I enthusiastically agreed. We set a date for next week to discuss teabagging strategies, although I'm not sure what strategies teabagging could possibly require, but I'm excited by the possibilities. I'm just happy that I found my in and that the only trigger I'll have to squeeze can only return friendly fire.